Din punct de vedere lexical, original și original sunt paronime. Nu știai asta, nu intra în panică. Stai în casă și învață. Suntem în stare, depășim urgența. Televiziunea română te pregătește pentru examene. Fii cu ochii pe noi, fiindcă doar la TVR2 ai teleșcoală. Cei mai buni profesori și cele mai bune lecții pentru succesul tău. Actors are so fortunate. They can choose whether they will appear in tragedy or in comedy, whether they will suffer or make merry, laugh or shed tears. But in real life, it is different. Most men and women are forced to perform parts for which they have no qualification. Zicea Oscar Wilde. Traducerea este temo pentru acasă. Hello everyone. What's the time? Well, it's English time, and you're probably familiar with me. My name is Ilana Leka, and I teach English in a high school in Bucharest, whose name is uh, George Koshbuk Bilingual National College. I teach both grammar and vocabulary as well as literature, and I love it because I love English. And here I am once again for our third session. During our previous sessions, we tried to look at various parts of the exam that you're preparing for, And I try to present bits of every part this each time. And just time for ECAM first. The last time we met, we looked at how to express opinions, the speaking exam in particular. And remember, I asked you, I taught you how to uh, develop an answer. And there were three steps for you to go through. First of all, respond to the task explain what you mean by that and also illustrate. And also we looked at writing. And if you remember, what I taught you how to write well is an informal letter. By the way, how were the letters you wrote? I guess they were good, very good and excellent, because you had all the ingredients to write the perfect letters. And in order to teach you how to do that, I showed you an example of a letter of an email that I received from a friend. Although the letter was a bit too big maybe, and you didn't have the time to read it thoroughly, I'm quite sure that going online and um, I don't know, looking the video on, the, uh, on YouTube, you get the chance to pause the recording and thoroughly read it. And if you remember, my friend Chris wrote a letter to me asking me details, giving me first of all details about what he did after leaving Romania, but also asking me information. So the reason why my friend wrote to me was to give information But also, towards the end of his email, he asked me something. So, ask for information, asking for information can also be one of the reasons we might need to write informal letters or emails. Then again, I said homework. And in that homework, we process together a task in which you were supposed to give information to a friend about something. So it was still a letter giving information. But what are the reasons could there be for us to write an informal letter? Well, in the letters you wrote as homework, you described something to your friend, if you remember a TV set. So this is yet another reason why we might be writing an informal letter. To describe something or even someone You could be describing an object, you could be describing a place or even a person that you admire a lot. There might be, of course, other reasons. Can you think of any? Well, maybe your friend needs advice on something and you're writing just because you want to give advice. 
or maybe your friend needs your opinion and desperately wants to know what you think about something. So giving opinion might be another reason for writing. Maybe your friend has a dilemma. Not knowing what to choose, they ask you to write something. So you might be writing this letter to make recommendations. My handwriting may not be very lisable. So let me help you with that. Here's a list of other reasons why you might need to write a letter. And remember, there may be more than one. So giving or asking for information, describing something or someone or even a place, asking or giving advice, giving your opinion, making recommendations, but maybe you might, be, uh, you might need to invite your friend somewhere or maybe to congratulate your friend on something or maybe to thank your friend for something. And remember, the organization of the email is important. What I was trying to say earlier is that it's important to identify the reason why you're writing because you will select the appropriate vocabulary according to that. Let me just give you an example of what I mean. Whenever you need to, uh, let's say, thank somebody for something, you will use language like, I would like to thank you for, or let me just say thanks for. Uh, here's an exercise for you. You have examples of four, what we call functions of language, so functional language, and uh, headings for you to use in order to label these according to what they express. When you use phrases like, do you think you could possibly come to, or I would really be happy to have you around for, or it would be really nice to, why don't you join us? Which, which of the four language functions do these illustrate? Expressing opinion, giving advice, inviting, or asking for information? Hmm, all right, so you're inviting somebody somewhere. Now we'll do the same for the rest of the exercise. When we say it would be useful if you, I think you should, or you ought to, or you had better, what if you do that? You're obviously trying to give advice to somebody as to what they need to do in a certain situation. Now let's move on. Do you think you could tell me? Can you please tell me? Or I was wondering if you could let me know. These are obviously ways in which you're trying to get information from your friend. So I'm going to write here, asking for information. And of course, what's left would be expressing opinion. When you do that, just as in speaking, you'll use phrases like, I'm the, of the opinion that, where to my mind, the way I say it, I tend to believe that. I completely or maybe partially agree or even disagree with. So using such phrases, you will be expressing personal opinion. And remember, these are the phrases that we've used when we talked about writing essays because we focused on writing opinion essays in which you adopt a point of view, you support it, and so on. So you see, this is the way in which all things come together. Identifying attitude is also important in other parts of the exam. And there's one part of the exam we haven't studied so far. You've guessed it, it's listening. Now, if you remember in the listening exam, there will be uh, two audio scripts for you to listen to twice. And there will be multiple choice tasks for you to uh, focus on. Let me just give you an example of what you need to do. You might be uh, listening to a monologue, meaning a person 
talking for about two or three minutes about a certain subject that could be a lecture somebody gives on a topic which is of general interest or there might be a conversation. I'd like us to focus on conversations today because it'll give us the chance to look into ways in which uh, speakers might uh, give us a hint as to what they mean just because they modulate the, their voices in a certain way. What you see on the screen now is a possible exam task. Listen to the conversations and choose the correct answer. There will be uh, questions with a, B, C, or maybe A, B, C, D in part two of the listening paper, and you will have time to read through the questions before, and this is very important. What we have, first of all, is a conversation between, as you can see in the questions, a customer and the shop assistant. So there's a situation in which two people are interacting. It might be something that happens in real life on a daily basis. You will need to take a look at keywords to help you identify what kind of information you should spot in the conversations that will be played for you. For instance, if we take a look at the first question, the customer wants, this is the key point because you will need to understand what the customer wants you may not hear the word once in the recording, but you need to identify the purpose of the conversation the customer has. Of course, you will go through uh, the questions before you listen. The same shoes in a different color, to exchange the shoes with a different pair or to get his money back for the faulty shoes. Up until now, what you've learned is that these people are in a shoe shop. Somebody has bought, the customer has bought a pair of shoes and they're unhappy with it maybe because we understand that the person is either trying to get a different color for those shoes or maybe to exchange them or maybe to get his money back, so to get a refund. And you will hear what the shop assistant has to say as well. And what you see now is that you don't have a keyword as the verb once in the first question to help you identify what um, detail you should be listening out for. In this case, you will need to pay close attention. Now I'm going to play the recording for you and please pay attention to what the customer says, what the shop assistant says, and we'll choose the right answer together. Oh, good afternoon, sir. How can I help you? Hello. Um, I came into the store last week mm -hmm. and I bought these shoes, but right. as you can see, they're slightly faulty oh, yeah. there. Okay. So, I mean, I would just like an exchange, you know, same colour, same size, but... Okay, that's fine. I'm going it? to a wedding tomorrow, sis. Oh, right. So, what you've heard some, uh, so far is what the customer says. And the customer says... He's there with a pair of shoes he's brought previously because he wants to exchange it. He wants the same size, the same kind of uh, pair of shoes, but a different one because the one he's bought is quite faulty. Now let's take a look th at the possible answer. Does he want the same shoes in a different color? No. Does he want to exchange the shoes with a different pair? Where does he want his money back? Well, he said nothing about money. So the right answer here would be B. He wants to exchange the shoes. Now let's hear what the shop assistant says. Oh, okay, oh, lovely, okay, well, okay, that's fine. Um, do you have the receipt on you, sir? No, I don't actually have the receipt. But oh. you served me, right, so that's... that's yeah, fine. I did, but... The policy is that you need a receipt to refund or, or exchange. I, can't I mean, I don't want a refund, I just want an exchange. Without the receipt, sir, there's not much I can do for you. So the shop assistant asks the customer for the receipt. So the tiny slip of paper that we get whenever we buy something. Does the customer have the receipt? Apparently he doesn't anymore, but he says, you're the one that served me, so you know that I'm the one who bought it. And the shop assistant keeps keeps telling him that it's the rule, they can't do anything without the receipt. So, the shop assistant can't help the customer at all? 
Well, apparently he can do something because he says, let me have a look. Doesn't want to help the customer? Well, he is very helpful, as you might have noticed. Needs the receipt to be able to help him? Yes, that's the right answer. And as we move on, I'd like us to take a look first at the other two questions that will be related to the same conversation. There's again a question related to the customer. The customer feels. So you will need to spot the feelings of the customer. The tone, as I was saying earlier, the tone that the speaker uses will also help you. Is he angry? Is he nervous? Or is he happy? Well, we all understand the word angry, we all understand the word happy, but nervous might be a bit of a false friend because we have in Romanian a similar word, which actually means angry, but nervous in English doesn't mean the same thing. Nervous actually means that you're anticipating something and it makes you feel quite uneasy about it. Maybe because uh, you don't know what's going to happen or maybe because you're worried about the outcome of what is going to happen. You might be feeling nervous before an exam and it's only natural to, to, for you to be feeling like that. Or you might be nervous before a job interview and once again, that's very natural. So pay attention to words that might be a bit tricky. And uh, the fourth question's refer, uh, question refers to the shop assistant and the keywords here would be the shop assistant manages to. So the shop assistant will be able to do something for the customer and you need to understand what exactly. Now let's listen for the rest of the recordings. We've only, well, we've only got these in size eight, so I'm, I'm, there's not much size else eight. I can, yeah. I'm not size eight, I'm size 10. Yeah, I know, sir, but there's, there's, we haven't got these exact shoes in stock here. So what do you want me to do? Surely that's your responsibility. Find me some shoes, which I can wear after buying them, you selling them to me, faulty. All right, so let's identify how does the customer feel? Is he angry that he can't wear the shoes for the wedding? Is he nervous about the wedding? Or is he happy about getting a refund? Well, at this stage, he can't get a refund, so C can't be the right answer. Nervous about the wedding? We have no idea. He does mention a wedding that he needs to attend, but we don't know how he feels about the wedding. So the right answer must be A, he's angry. And you could say that even before reading through the uh, exam questions that he was angry. Now let's see what the shop assistant manages to do for him. Okay, um, I'm very sorry for the inconvenience here, sir. I, I really am, but um, there is some good news. We have these exact shoes in size 10, okay. same color, but in the Covent Garden branch. All right. Okay, but that's, that's, that's as much as I can do for you. I've reserved them for you, sir, so if you just make your way over there, then okay. they'll All right. be ready for you. That's fine. All right, okay. that's great. All right, so the shop assistant manages to do something for the customer, and that's a happy ending after all. Because he can't offer a refund, he can't replace the faulty shoes for the uh, customer not having the receipt with him. He manages, however, to find the pair of shoes and reserves the pair of shoes for the person to pick it up from a different store. Now let's move on to a different conversation. This time, you're going to listen to two young ladies and there won't be much help from me this time because you need to practice this on your own as you will do in the exam as well. You're going to hear a girl, Anna. She's the one to start the conversation and the girl, Aisha. For the first part of the recording, you will need to understand what the ladies are working on. As in the second one, you will need to identify what Aisha was too busy to do. Now let's listen, please. Okay, so I just wanted to um, talk about the project mm -hmm. so far. Yeah, sure. Because, um, you know, we've got the deadline in two weeks, so it's yeah. coming up quite fast. Um, I've typed out all the sections that we talked oh, yeah, about. Yeah, so. yeah. And back we are again. So the two young ladies are working on a school project. And they need to cooperate. 
Now let's listen out and find out what Aisha was too busy to do. Now this is a negative word, too busy to do, which means that hmm, something nasty must have happened there. Listen out, please. And you've done the PowerPoint, yeah? Um, well, I've not really had a chance to do the PowerPoint yet. So Aisha was supposed to do this PowerPoint presentation in support of their school project, and she didn't do it. Now let's move on, please, to the other questions. Please pay attention to words that might change the meaning of what, you, uh, what you're about to hear. Which of these is not true? Since you have three possible answers, it means that two of these sentences will be true, one of them is false. Now let's listen and find out which one is false. Chance. Well, the thing is, I've just been so busy. You know I've been telling you about volleyball yeah, and rehearsals, me, how important it is to me, so I'm okay, not really... Okay, yeah, but I did actually ask you to do that last week. Yeah, I and know, And you said but you would. I know, but I've been, so, I've been literally so, so busy. I've okay, not even had yeah, one... Yeah, I've been busy as well, but you said you were going to do yeah, work in this I project know, and it wasn't I mean, going to be just me. I've done all of this work and you've done nothing. Fine, okay, you're right, you're right. I'm, I'm sorry. I... Well, Aisha had a week to prepare the PowerPoint. This is what we find out. This sentence is true. Anna hasn't done anything for the project. Well, actually, we learned that Anna is the only one who's done anything for the project. She's done all the work so far. So this sentence is false. And then Aisha apologizes for not doing the work, which is also true. Since we have two sentences which are true and one, of, one is false, which is the right answer? Obviously, B. And in the end, Aisha offers to, let's listen out and find out what she offers to do. How about, how about this weekend, I'll finish off the project and you can, you can have a break. And you'll do the PowerPoint? Yeah, I'll finish off the PowerPoint and you don't have to do anything. And, and maybe after the weekend, we can meet up and just finish off the last few bits together. How does that sound? Well, it was quite clear. She suggests that Anna should take a break for the weekend. She'll do the PowerPoint and then, since they have two more weeks to prepare for the school project, they will get together and discuss the bits at the end. So the right answer here is do the PowerPoint presentation over the weekend. It was easy, wasn't it? And the exam will be plain sailing for you if you take the tips that I'm going to uh, still pass on to you from now on. It's going to be a bit of reading next time, a bit of writing to you because we need to blend all these together and get you ready for the exam in time. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>